All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Chan again, and this will be your last lesson on KEQ. Now, we talked about KEQ and what it was, was basically a ratio of products over reactants at equilibrium. And hopefully you had a chance to do some of the questions and the homework just to get you to practice um, doing the KEQ calculations. As well, by looking at the KEQs, you can indicate whether or not a reactants or products are greater at equilibrium. Now, KEQ can also be used to predict whether a reaction is endothermic or exothermic. Now, going back to Le Chatelier's, you remember an increase in temperature favors the endothermic reaction while a decrease in temperature favors the exothermic reaction. Okay, so increase in temperature favors the endothermic reaction, while a decrease in temperature favors the exothermic reaction. Now, let's say if we have a given reaction here, PCL5 gives you PCL3 and Cl2. If KEQ at 227 degrees is 2.24 and KEQ at 400 degrees Celsius is 33.3. .3. Is the Ford reaction endo or exothermic? Now, in this case, you want to take a look at this. Notice when you increase the temperature, the KEQ increased because it went from 2.24, it went to 33.3. .3. So with the KEQ increasing, an increase in KEQ, what that means is that you have an increase of products during the, sh okay? You have an increase in the products. If you had an increase in the products, what that means is that the equilibrium must have shifted to the left. Oh, sorry, shifted to the right. So therefore, shifting right or shifting to the forward must be endothermic. And that is how we combine the idea of Le Chatelier shift with temperature. So again, what happened is when you increase the temperature, you increase the KEQ. I'll put that here like that. When you increase the KEQ, that means you must have had more products at equilibrium. For you to have more products, that means the equilibrium must have shifted to the right when you change the temperature. So shifting to the right, that means the forward reaction, that's another name for shifting right, must be endothermic. Okay, and that is the thought process when you're breaking it down. Now, another thing with KEQ that we can talk about is trial KEQ. Trial KEQ and the reaction to establish equilibrium. In these types of problems, given amounts of all substances, okay, are placed in a fixed volume. To see if the system is at equilibrium already, one must use the initial concentrations to calculate a trial KEQ, TKQ, or just Q, and compare it to the actual KEQ. Now, there are three conditions here. Trial KEQ is equal, 
trial KQ is greater than or trial KQ is less than, okay? So depending on the scenario, you might have the system at equilibrium, you might have too much product initially, or you might have too much reactant initially, okay? And where does the equilibrium shift? So notice here, it says reaction shift towards reactants or reaction shift towards products. And what this is, is to reestablish, let me just move this here, establish equilibrium. Okay, now what do I mean by this? So let's say, for example, let's say we have 2N2 plus O2 gives you 2N2O. In a 5-liter container, there was 0.4 moles of N2, 8 moles of O2, and 6 moles of N2O initially. What shift, if any, will occur to achieve equilibria? Now, notice here they give you a KEQ value. This is the ratio at equilibrium. Okay? But notice the questions, all these concentrations, all these values are initial. Notice that word initial here. So how would we approach a question like this? So what you have is, again, we'll set up our ice tables. So 2N2 plus O2 is in equilibrium with 2N2O. So if we set up our ice tables here, we have ice. Now, here we have 0 0.80, 0 1.60, 1 1.20. Now you might ask, well, Mr. Chan, where did you get these numbers from? And remember, this is concentration. So for N2, I had to take the four moles, which is up here, and I have to divide it by the five liters. Now, in this particular case, which direction will the equilibrium shift? Will it shift to the left or shift to the right? We don't know that. In our previous examples, when we went up here, if you looked at all your homework, notice there was one that was always zero. In this particular example, the products was zero. If we look at the homework example we did last day, let me see, where is it, right here? Notice, there was always a zero somewhere. So even what we could do was we could predict which side would go up, which side would go down, because there was a zero somewhere in the initial concentrations. But in this case, we don't. Oh, oh wrong one, whoopsie, there we go. In this particular case, we don't, okay? Both the reactants and the products are filled. So what we have to do is we use, take the concentrations to calculate trial KQ. So we take the original concentrations here just to take a look at what the ratio is. So here, I will go TKEQ. The setup is still the same, concentration of N2O squared divided by the concentration of N2, concentration of O2. We plug it in. So this will be 1.20 all squared divided by 
0 0.80, whoops, we've got a square here, squared, and 1.60. Now, if we take these numbers, so 1.2 squared divided by 0.8 squared divided by 1.6. So again, answer of 1.41. Now, what is the significance of this number is basically saying that the ratio of products over my reactants is 1.41. Now, in this case, the trial KEQ is greater than KEQ. Therefore, what that means is too much product initially. And the key word is initially. And so what happens is, so equilibrium shift to the left. to lower product concentration. All right, so what happens here? Equilibrium shift to the left, so I know this side will go up, this side will go up, this side will go down. How much so? Well, you could say, oh, this could be 2x, this would be x, this would be minus 2x. All right, and then what you would have is here would be 0 0.8 plus 2x, you have 1.6 plus x, you have 1.20 minus 2x. And here, what you have now is you have your equilibrium concentrations. Okay, now, so what is the whole idea of this trial KEQ? Is what you want to do is figure out which side would go up, which side would go down. Again, in our previous example, we didn't have to do it because there was a zero we know that one side had to go up, the zero side had to go up. So for here, we didn't, so we have to manually calculate this. Now, you might say, well, Mr. Chan, once we get the equilibrium calculations or the concentrations, if you were mean and asked us to solve for X, what would we do with all of this like 1.41 that we had calculated before? Once you figure out the, which side goes up, which side goes down, you wipe out all these numbers. Because all these numbers did was tell you which side would go up, which side would go down. And once you figured out your equilibrium values, there's just like regular calculations where you plug in the numbers to try to calculate X and the KEQ would be the 0 0.420. All right, so that is what trial KEQ is, is basically trying to figure out which side would go up in an equilibrium as the equilibrium is establishing and which side would go down. All right, folks, thank you very much. And what I will be doing is giving you uh, homework to work on. And thank you and have a good day.